In this video, we will start 2.2, which is separable equations. So by definition, 2.2.1, it says a first order DE of the form dy dx equal to a product of two functions here, or another way to write it would be y prime equal to g of x times h of y. So you have two different equal, uh, functions here that are multiplied together, okay? One function being in terms of x and another function being in terms of y. These are said to be separable or to have separable variables, okay? Because you can write them as a product of one function with only x's times one function with only y's. Now FYI, if you are missing a variable, a constant is a function. So if all I have, for example, is x squared, I could say that that's multiplied by 1, and this is my h of y, and this is my g of x, okay? So keep that in mind, that if you're missing a variable, it still follows the same form, okay? So here's example 1. It says dx plus e to the 3x dy equals 0. Now, I write a note here, and it says, note, the equation can be rewritten. I want to have it into this form, right? So, or I at least want to verify that this is a separable equation before I attempt to solve it, okay? So what I want to do is I want to make sure that I can get it into this form before I attempt to solve it. So what I did here was I divided both sides by e to the 3x, negative e to the 3x. When I divide it on this side, they'll cancel, leaving me with just dy, and when I divide it on this side, it ends up being a fraction that looks like this. Now, remember, you want dy in the numerator and dx in the denominator. So I went ahead and divided this side by dx and divided this side by dx. When I divide the left side by dx, the dx's will cancel, leaving me with just the 1 in my numerator. When I divide the right-hand side by dx, I'll end up with dy over dx. This, I just switch these over and I put the left hand fraction on the, I'm sorry, the right hand fraction on the left side and I put the right hand fraction on the right side. But notice that I changed it. Because this is in the denominator, I can move it up to the numerator, but what happens is that the exponent will change signs. So notice that now it's a negative 3x exponent, which is the same thing as saying a fraction, okay? Then what I did was I separated this. I noticed that this only has x's in it. There's no y's. So I rewrote it as a negative e to the negative 3x times 1. And then g of x would be negative e to the negative 3x. And h of y would be 1. However, another way to write it would be to just take the coefficient here, negative 1, as the h of y and then the e to the negative 3x without the sign would be the g of x. So either way you separate that, as long as these two expressions are equivalent to what you had before, you can um, separate them in that order or in that fashion, okay? But once we have separated it, um, from there we actually need to solve the de. So then what you do to solve the de is you want to get your dx on one side and your dy's on the other side, okay? So you want all your x variables on one side and the y variables on the other side. Now notice, all this manipulation that I did here was just to verify that it is a separable function or a separable equation, okay? I don't need to use all of this to do the problem. I can go back to the original to make sure that I'm doing what is required to solve the DE, okay? So I first want to separate everything, then I want to integrate both sides of the equation and then I want to solve for y if possible.
So I'm going to go back to the original function, which was dx plus e to the 3x dy equal to 0. And now what I want to do is I want to get um, the dx terms on one side, y terms on the other. So the first step that I do is I make sure that the dy and the dx are on the appropriate sides. So I will do the same thing as I did before and subtract this entire term over to the right hand side. So this entire term moves over to the right hand side and since it was added I subtracted it to move it over. Then I notice that this has an x in it which means it needs to be on that side and since these are multiplied together I will divide them. So I will get just dy on the right hand side and I will get um, negative e I should not have had a negative I should be dividing by the exact same thing so they can cancel but if I want to bring it up to the numerator then it does become negative 3x okay now that it is in this form I have everything with an x on one side and everything with the y on the other side I have successfully separated everything okay then what you want to do is you want to integrate both sides of this equation so I want to integrate this side and I want to integrate this side now the right hand side is easy to integrate you integrate a constant um, one and you just get y plus c on the left hand side and I'm gonna say c1 because I don't know what that constant is okay on the left hand side you do have to use substitution so I'm gonna go in and let me use another color I'm gonna do some u substitution so I'm going to let my exponent be u which is negative 3x and then if I take the derivative of both sides of this equation I get this as du so I have the negative and I have the dx what I don't have is the 3 so I'm going to divide both sides by 3 and I get that du over 3 should be substituted for the negative dx so then this e becomes the integral of e to the u which is what was circled that's u and then the negative dx this part here which is boxed will become the du so the negative dx becomes the du and then if you remember um, and I should I haven't integrated yet so I don't need my constant of integration on the left hand side just yet when you integrate e to the u you get e to the u plus c However, this C may be different from that C, so I'm going to write C2. And then I'm going to back sub what U was. What was U? U was negative 3x. Oh, I messed up. Negative dx should have been du over 3. And so then, actually, there should have been a step before I integrated some people can do this really really fast and I will do it quicker in the future but for right now I just want to show you the u substitution so that you at least have seen it and when I do it quickly um, you won't be completely lost on what it is I'm doing so this one third I'm gonna bring out to the front and then I'm gonna write e to the u du I'm gonna keep my right hand side of the equation still there then I'm gonna write one third e to the u this is just my constant and the integral of e to the u is e to the u plus c again I'm going to use c2 because it could be different from this c and then I'm going to back sub what u was and u was negative 3x and then the last step was to solve for y if possible so I'm going to minus c1 on both sides and I end up with one third e to the negative 3x and I'm just gonna put plus c equal to y because it doesn't matter what this constant is or what that constant is when I add or subtract them I'm just gonna get another constant okay and so this is my answer y equals 
1 third e to the negative 3x plus c. And you can check. I am not going to check, but you could check. If you go back here to this, when we solve for dy dx, you could take the derivative of this function here and see if it equals this. And it will. This is my constant multiplier, and when you take the derivative of e to anything, you get e to the negative 3x, which is what I have here, times the derivative of the exponent, which would have been negative 3. And the negative 3 and the 1 third would have reduced down to negative 1. And then the derivative of a constant is just 0, which is why you don't see a constant here. Okay, So this does check out. It is, in fact, correct. But you can check your answers if you're unsure if you did everything correctly. Okay, So let's see another example. This one has both um, x and y um, variables in it. So we're still going to follow the same thing. I just wanted you to note that this is, in fact, a separable equation. Because if I divide both sides by x, which I did here, um, if you divide the left-hand side by x, the x will cancel. If you divide the right-hand side by x, you end up with this fraction here. And if you notice, I can pull that fraction apart and separate it by writing it as a product of 1 over x times 4y. And I would that would be equivalent to this um, fraction here. And so then this would be my function in terms of x, and that would be my function in terms of y, and therefore it is in fact separable. Okay. As far as solving the DE, I'm going to take this DE and I want to get first get rid of the fraction. So I'm going to multiply both sides by DX and they will cancel here and on the right hand side I will get this. But I notice that the variables are with the wrong um, differential parts. So I want to divide by x, and I want to divide by 4y, so that I can get the variables on the correct side. Here the x's will cancel, and I'll get dy over 4y. Here the variables will cancel, and the 4's will cancel, and I'll get dx over x. Now be careful, because I'm going to integrate both sides. This can be rewritten as 1 fourth the integral of 1 over y dy. And the right hand side can be rewritten as 1 over x dx. And the integral of 1 over y dy is the natural log of the absolute value of y, of course, plus c. And over here, the integral of 1 over x dx is ln of the absolute value of x, again, plus c. But it could be a different c, so I'm going to put plus 2. And then now it's a bunch of manipulation here, because I want to attempt to solve for y. Now y is only shown here, which means it is probably, quote unquote, easier to solve for y in this, versus if there's multiple terms that have a y. So the first thing I want to do is move over um, the C1, so I get 1 fourth ln of the absolute value of y equal to the ln of x plus C1, my, or C2 minus C1. The next thing I want to do is multiply by 4 to every term. So multiply by 4 here, multiply by 4 here, multiply by 4 there, and multiply by 4 here. Every single term gets multiplied by 4. Here it'll cancel, and I'll get the ln of y equals 4 ln of the absolute value of x plus 4c2 minus 4c1. Now if you recall, um, your rules for logarithms, this can be written as an exponent. So this can be written as ln of x to the fourth, and all of this is just one big fat c. Okay? Um, 
we can call it C or we can call it C3 just because this is not going to be my final constant because I'm not done solving for Y, okay? As soon as Y is alone and then I want to redefine C, I can. So let's continue. Um, I don't have enough space over there, so I'm going to come up here. And I'm going to just rewrite the equation. So ln of y equal to ln of the absolute value of x to the fourth plus c3. In order for me to get rid of the ln, I'm going to have to raise each term or each side to e. So it's e raised to this and e raised to all of this. Okay. Now when I do that, the ln will cancel here and I'll just be left with the absolute value of y. Over here, I'm going to separate it using my, my uh, product rule for exponents. It'll be e to the ln of the absolute value of x to the fourth times e to the c3. Because when I multiply things with the same base, I add their exponents. And so that would be equivalent to this line up here e to all of this as an exponent. Okay? Then I'm going to simplify this so I get the absolute value of y equals x to the fourth. Now it could be absolute value of x to the fourth. However, x to the fourth, no matter what x is, is always going to be positive. So I don't technically need the bars here. Another thing, e to the c3, no matter what that constant is, when I raise e to that constant, I'm just going to end up with another constant. So this is a, just a big fat c again. However, it depends on y. y could be a positive or a negative value. So I can't really get rid of the bars for that side. However, if I divide both sides by a positive, this stays c x to the fourth. And if I divide both sides by a negative, I will get a negative c x to the fourth. Okay? And I have successfully solved for C, I mean solved for Y. So this is my answer. Now you can verify. Look at what we got here, up here. This is what we had. So we're saying that Y equals plus or minus C X to the fourth. So if I plug this in, what is the derivative of Y? Well, the derivative of this would be plus or minus 4 C X to the third. And then if I take the original y, plus or minus c, x to the fourth, and divide it by x, I end up with plus or minus 4 c, x to the third on the left-hand side. And here, this will reduce with one of these, leaving me with plus or minus 4 c, x to the third on the right-hand side. These two do equal each other, therefore we have solved the equation correctly. Okay? But there was a lot of manipulation that we had to do with those C's and then the LN's and the exponentials to get there, okay? But it is possible. I'll do the next example in a different video.